So culture of quality is a very ambiguous term. You talk to 50 different people, you're probably going to get 50 slightly different responses. So at CEB, when we started looking at a culture of quality, we wanted to make sure we came up with a clear definition. Our clear definition of a culture of quality is one where employees see, hear, and feel quality all around them. And it's really enabled by a fourth element, the transfer element. And this is what happens when employees transfer their quality values to others. What's interesting is that through our work, we actually found that most senior executives are focusing on the wrong things. So there's a tendency to go towards process, systems, additional controls. That's actually the wrong approach. It just adds to the prescriptive nature of quality, and it creates an environment where our employees just follow quality. It's the foundation, but it's not really the goal of building a culture of quality. Instead, executives should be focusing on building an environment where employees can take self-directed action about quality. And there are four things that they can do in particular. The first is help employees learn how to take personal ownership over quality. The second is to create an environment where employees can transfer those quality values to each other. Thirdly, we need to be focused on the credibility of the messages that we send about quality. And finally, we also need to help our other senior executives and other functions really emphasize quality in their leadership moments as well. Incentives is traditionally thought of a tool that will help drive cultural change. We tested for this in our quantitative work and we actually found that incentives have zero impact on improving a culture of quality. Now this is a bit counterintuitive and we think that this is because incentives can be a great way to jumpstart a change but they don't go to the long-term sustainment of that change. So there are a lot of studies out there that show once you take the incentive out of the equation, the behavior will return to what it was previously. So we actually do not recommend that companies focus on incentives to improve their culture of quality. So CEB did a quantitative study around culture of quality. We took that definition, the hear, feel, see, transfer, and worked with nearly 30 companies to create a measure of the presence or absence of culture in their operations. And we looked at these things across businesses, product lines, functions, and even levels of seniority. And it taught us two things that were particularly important. The first, culture of quality is much weaker at most companies than we think it is. 60% of employees told us that they work in a work environment where the culture of quality is half of what its potential is. So that means that there's a bigger opportunity for improvement here than most people think. And the second is, by looking at the best companies, we're able to identify the four things that truly drive a culture of quality. And they may not be the things that people think. It's really around employee ownership, leadership emphasis, message credibility, and peer involvement. Executives right now are in a really tough position. Most people still have constrained budgets, but at the same time have these transformative goals around culture of quality. You know, we wanted to look at CEB about what the bottom line impact of a culture of quality was. So it turns out for every 5,000 employees that a company has, you can recapture as much as $67 million of employee productivity by improving your culture of quality. We see all sorts of companies that are great at culture, whether you're small, whether you're large, whether you're public, whether you're private. Anybody can become a standout in a culture of quality. So we have two recommendations for an individual employee. So first, it really goes back to that transfer element that I was talking about. Employees should remember that they themselves are models of good quality behavior. So if they prioritize quality and they focus on quality, that's going to rub off on their peers. So they should feel good about their ability to be a role model here. Now, the second is about employee ownership, one of the things that we know drives a culture of quality. Now, if an employee isn't sure the behaviors that management wants them to uh, emulate to drive a culture of quality, they should ask their managers what that looks like. And they can use a simple conversation starter like, you know, culture of quality is important to me. Quality is a priority for me. What else can I be doing to help us achieve our quality goals?